Stephen Covey, one of the most influential personal development authors of the 20th century, once wrote that the path to a well-lived life is to live, to love, to learn, and to leave a legacy. Research is showing that to be a lifelong learner and to stimulate our brains in positive ways is essential for our wellness and especially for healthy aging. Hi, I'm Dr. Darren Morton and I've been studying the secrets to health and wellness for over 30 years. We're about to explore how to stimulate our brains to stay intellectually engaged. We'll talk with a brain expert and discover that riding a bike isn't as easy as, well, riding a bike. The concept of brain plasticity is truly fascinating. I have a little experiment to show that due to brain plasticity, even old dogs can learn new tricks. To help illustrate, I'm joined by elite triathlete, Crystal Hockley. I know that you probably spend, what, hundreds of hours on that bike every year. So Ironman, you're looking at uh, 3.8k swim, 180k cycle, and then a 42k run. And what's your strongest leg? Probably the bike. The bike. So you yep. love bikes, do you? Yeah, I love the bike. Well, I'm glad you said that. <laughs> and you're very used to challenging your body. Today we're going to challenge your brain. I would like you to have a try, not on that bike, which is very smooth by the way, but on this bike here instead. So everything about this bike is the same as a normal bike, yep. except one itty bitty little thing. And that is that the steering is reversed. Okay, so when you turn the handlebars to go that way, the wheel goes the opposite. That's that one thing, tiny thing, small right. difference. You ready? Yep. All right, let's have a try. <laughs> so, park your bike. Okay, so here's my challenge to you. All you need to do is ride from here to the end of the bricks, just a few meters away over there. All right. You've spent hundreds of hours on a bike, yep. and so you, your brain has a pathway etched into it that knows that activate that, and you can ride effortlessly without even thinking about it. Now things have changed a little bit, but we're gonna see if you can do it. So it's, remember, it's just reverse steering. From there to there, I'll cheer you on. Ready? Yep. Go! Oh, so close. <laughs> Come on, Crystal, you ride bikes all the time. Let's back Hang it up. On, okay. Let's back it up and have another try. I know you can do this, I just know it. Okay. All right, it's just like riding a bike. <laughs> Can so, I borrow this for a week? You think, and you know what, that's the interesting thing. If you were to borrow it for a week, probably by the end of the week, you would be able to do it. Well, does that mean I'd be able to ride this and not ride that? Ah, here's a fascinating thing. Do you know okay. that if you only practice on this yep. and not a normal bike, yep. your brain will etch the new pattern on the top of that one and you can actually forget how to ride a normal bike. All right. And this testifies to the whole idea of brain plasticity. Yep. So our brains can mould and shift. Yep. Such that they say that even old dogs, like 50 year old dogs, can learn new tricks. Do you want to show you how? Yep, sure. All right. Actually, I need a helmet. Can I borrow your helmet? Sure. Question, how many times have you done this? Yeah, good question. This is my second time ever. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, here we go. No way. Okay, now you've just got to give me some pointers. Yeah, okay. So the pointer <laughs> is... There's a lovely book by Daniel Kahneman called Thinking Fast and Slow. And he consolidates in that book a lot of the research that won him a Nobel Prize. And so they did a lot of studies to try to examine how people how people think and behave given minimal stimuli. And one example in the book is um, groups of people being asked to do things like match random words and putting people in a room where they matched random words which had a heavy preponderance of negative words, tired, discouraged, unhappy, as opposed to a group who had random words that are totally neutral they got them to match up words that, that went together and then they said, okay, we've got another test, similar test to do in the room down the hall. Please come 
and do that test. They found that the people who'd been in the room where everything was tired, heavy and helpless moved significantly more slowly towards the second test than the people who had a, just a neutral task to do. Lots of the very minor stimuli that we are unaware of change our behaviour. When I sat in the chair that my patients sit in and directly opposite looked at my bookshelf, I found that I had a whole stack of books on the shelf that referred to the treatment of, you know, anxiety and the treatment of depression, the treatment for obsessive compulsive disorder, the treatment of phobic disorders, the treatment of eating disorders. It was all disorder, unhappiness, sadness. And I thought, this is terrible. People often sit there and glance, I see them glance at my bookshelf. Mm -hmm. So I sat down one day and dragged out all the books that had negative titles and put them out of sight. And then I dragged all the books that said something about social connectedness or happiness or well-being and put them where people would be likely to see them. <laughs> and I hope that that small act has had a positive effect. Challenging our brains by learning new things can keep us intellectually engaged. And there are so many ways we can keep our brains active. Learn a foreign language. Do a puzzle or crossword. Play mind-stretching games like Pictionary, Chess or Sudoku. Stay socially active. Go to art galleries, theatre or concerts. Write or keep a journal about your day. And of course, reading is a great way to keep your mind stimulated. Studies have shown that reading books are one of the best ways to stay intellectually engaged. There's a lot of potential for neuroplasticity here. Mm.